Hello everyone and welcome. This is Wings LTD with the Resistance Community bringing you some important instructional videos for Battlefield 4. In this first video series, we're going to be discussing the Battlefield 4 settings editor and the benefits that it brings to you while playing Battlefield. Now, the first thing you've noticed while you've been playing is that you can only edit your in-game settings in one of two ways. Either going through your documents folder and opening up Notepad and actually editing all of the settings in the raw data form, or loading up the game, actually being in there, and either you've actually spawned in and hit escape to start messing with your settings and being killed by enemies, or you found that you've been sitting at that deploy screen for quite a while trying to figure out what the best things are for you. But have no fear, there have been quite a few tools that have been released that allow you to do this while not actually being in the game at all. Now, the one I actually prefer to use is, of course, the Battlefield 4 settings editor that is created by Realmware. Once we download and load this up, we can actually go over here to the profile settings and create a brand spanking new profile. And what I'm actually going to do is delete this profile and create a fresh one for this recording that will allow us to walk through these settings through the next couple of videos that will be uploaded here to YouTube that allow me to fully explain all of these settings and actually allow you to pick and choose which video you want to watch instead of sitting through here and watching like an hour long session about the software and which settings are optimal and why they're good and bad etc etc. So without further ado let's go ahead and get this started. I'm going to give my profile a name and then click OK. It's going to create that temporary profile for me right here. And also, it has a default profile, which you will normally see. Once we first create our profile, we're going to click over here. And for the rest of this video, we're going to be discussing the basics of this gameplay tab and a little bit of the graphics. In the next video, we're going to be going over the advanced graphical settings and uh, all the fun stuff that is there with it. Now, whenever you first create your profile, you're going to see all of your Battlefield settings as they are actually currently set from whenever you started playing or just the default ones if you haven't actually played yet. The first option we have here is Network Smoothing. It's normally set to 100% in Battlefield, and you'll notice though it makes the game look absolutely fantastic, you might have issues with rubber banding, especially if you're playing on an overseas server, am I right? Whenever your ping's already at 100 milliseconds, it makes it a little bit hard to get the headshot. But whenever you're moving back and forth, back and forth across the screen, having no idea what's going on whatsoever, it makes it near impossible to get any kills whatsoever, much less secure an objective. So the way that we actually fix that is taking the network smoothing all the way down to 0%. What this does is it gives you the trade-off of having... Almost. Now I say almost because it's still bound to happen. It gives you almost no rubber banding issues. I'm going to say it reduces them by 99%, but there is still the 1% where it can and will happen. Now, with Network Smoothing disabled, it does give you this warning that it can increase your visual errors. And yes, while I'm playing, I have seen a small increase in visual errors. Sometimes I'll be looking at a barricade or a wall and it'll appear like I'm actually playing DayZ with triangles shooting across the screen everywhere, but it doesn't last for very long. You can literally just move over a few pixels and the issue will resolve itself. So that's the trade-off of making network smoothing 0%. It lowers your ping by 15 to 20 milliseconds and also it eliminates rubber banding. The secondary option we have here in the gameplay settings is the squad with friends. Pretty self-explanatory when you join on a server. If your friends are in a squad that has open space, it will automatically throw you in the squad, even if it's private. Next up, we have the Weapon Zoom Steady Scope and Soldier Sprint. By default in Battlefield, these are at the hold position, though you can choose them to click if you're one of the people that plays shooter games that prefers to actually toggle your down scope sights and everything else. I prefer using the hold method as it allows me to quick scope a lot faster than simply clicking. The hint settings, most of these are enabled by default, though I prefer to take off all of the hints except for the game mode messages, which will allow me to still see if there is a point that needs to be defended, if it's been neutralized, or if the enemy has captured it, if I'm on the other side of the map. Meanwhile, we also have the HUD settings. On this screen, you can change the opacity of your heads-up display, which is all of the game information that you see in Battlefield 4. 
you can click over here to also type in default values, which we're definitely going to need here in the future. But for me personally, I like to set it at a nice 50%. While my HUD is not drastically large by any standards, it's at the normal 100%, setting it to 50% opacity allows me to still see the information that I need to on the screen, but it doesn't distract me away from the gameplay action. With the chat log, I like to set this to hidden, though there are some servers that force you to have your chat active. It's a little bit finicky with that, but of course the server can overrule the client at any point in time. Thank you guys for making this possible. Also, make sure to regularly save your settings in case uh, the program crashes. I've never had that happen, but there is always the possibility. The next thing that I like to do is disable battle log, which takes the battle log off of your actual main screen over here on the right-hand side when you're in-game. As far as the pop-up of the backspace key, the um, player outline that shows you how many of your friends you have online, etc., etc. So I disable that. You can still hit backspace to get into battle log. You'll still see battle log symbols whenever you're not actually in game. So let's say you're in the deploy screen and everything else and not actually spawned in on the map. You'll still see the battle log stuff, but it takes it away whenever you actually get away from the deploy screen and back in the action. I do enable the kill log, however, as I do play on a lot, and I mean a lot of hardcore servers, and also I play on normal servers as well, but if you disable the kill log, you won't know if an enemy is killed unless you're in VOIP with your squad mates and they announce that the enemy is down. So, for goodness sakes, please, keep the kill log enabled. You'll know if someone is getting the kill and you'll have a secondary confirmation that you have killed an enemy. Now, we're going to go over just the basic graphical settings in the last portion of this video, and for the next video, we'll discuss display settings and the overall quality settings for Battlefield 4. Without further ado, let's talk about these basic graphical settings while I move this over here to the side. I like to keep the basic graphical settings for the brightness at 50% and actually open up my NVIDIA control panel here and adjust my brightness, contrast, and gamma on my actual desktop. As you notice, I do like to keep most things at stock here, but it's more accurate for you to adjust your brightness, contrast, and gamma with your application for your desktop, then adjusting it in game. As brightness all the way up at 100% makes the game just a little bit too blown out. With the settings that I have here, it makes everything fully clear and I don't really have to worry about much. As far as field of view comparing Battlefield 4 to Battlefield 3, in Battlefield 3, you could set your field of view to whatever you wanted. You could set it down to 60, you could set it all the way up to 90, but whenever you looked down the side of your weapon, it locked your field of view at 70. This was great for people that had high fields of view so they could look all around the map, have a better advantage than other folks. And by better advantage, I mean they could actually see more of the screen, which allows it to not only see more quote-unquote normal, it allows you to see enemies that you wouldn't normally see unless you're a very proactive player. Most competitive players don't use full FOV. They use a very strict set of FOV rules in order to help them focus and stay in the gameplay action. But that's, again, for another video. The most optimal settings, as far as I can tell you, if you've been playing a lot of Battlefield 3 and other things and you want to maintain a balance of where you can actually see a little bit more than everyone else, but you still want to have the majority accuracy of your guns kept and you want to be able to get headshots a bit easier, setting your vertical field of view to 75 is the way to go. Any value between 70 and 80 is nominal for Battlefield, though if you're a sniper, I would recommend setting your FOV to 60. This allows you to easily acquire headshots at an 800 to 1000 meter range, whereas if you're using a scope, even with the 14X mod and a very long range scope, having a field of view above 60 drastically reduces your chances of not only hitting the target, but properly calculating the bullet drop and distance. Therefore, I make two profiles, one for sniping and one for regular gun play. You can switch through these, of course, in the console if needed, or you can drag the slider around in-game, your choice. But just as a, as a means to an end, 75 is the most optimal setting. After you type in your field of view here at the top or use the arrow keys up and down, please click in the secondary box here for the horizontal field of view so it is automatically adjusted for you. 
HUD scaling, I do appreciate it if everyone would keep it at 100%. I prefer it if everyone keeps it at 100%, though you can change that if you wish. Keeping it at 100% gives you a nice staple where you can still see all the numbers and it's not too intrusive. I've seen some people play at 50% and if that works out for you, hey, that is absolutely okay. There's nothing wrong with that. What I do instead is, of course, change my opacity to 50%, which allows me to still have the exact same amount of the game area as reducing the HUD, though I can still see the numbers quite easily for the ammunition that I have left and the minimap in-game. As far as motion blur and weapon blur are concerned, I turn motion blur off. Normally, you do have a default value of 100%, though if you reduce it to zero, whenever you're in a vehicle or running across the battlefield, it keeps your string statically sharp. Therefore, you'll be able to spot enemies at a greater distance and also notice very small movements. Whereas if you had motion blur enabled, even though it makes the game quote unquote seem more realistic, it really doesn't help you out very much. It actually hinders your performance inside the game. Though, I do enable weapon blur for one reason only. If you have weapon blur enabled and you're looking down iron sights, it reduces, of course, the sharpness of your weapon and helps you focus on where you're aiming in the middle of the screen. If you choose to keep weapon blur off, it may not hinder you consciously, but in reality, without you focusing in the middle of the screen, you're actually seeing the gun sharper, it can and will reduce your accuracy. We've proven this time and time again with studying through basic training, advanced training, etc., etc., that if the weapon is not blurred, your eyes are actually not focused on the point of your crosshair, they're focused on the area that is around it, which will reduce your accuracy quite significantly in the middle of firefighting. The last option that we're going to go through in this video is colorblind support, which is very self-explanatory. If you are medically classified with one of these colorblind disabilities, please select the one that pertains to your colorblindness. If you have colorblindness, like I do, which is not listed on this, simply select off and you're going to have to pretty much deal with the color settings of the game as they are, though you can go into the advanced editor and change around the colors and everything else to your pleasing, I'd recommend just keeping it stock. It's absolutely fine. In the next video, as stated earlier, we're going to discuss the display settings and overall quality settings on Battlefield 4. What exactly do they affect and what would you really like to do? Sacrifice quality in order for better performance or make the game just look pretty? Until next time, this has been Wings LTD with the Resistance Community bringing you a great instructional video about Battlefield 4.